Hello everyone, it's Susan Laps and this is Stoneblock 2. Hope everyone's having a fantastic day. I'm having a pretty amazing one myself. Hope you guys are all having a real good day too, because uh, yeah, it's a sweet day today, man. Good times. But anyway, in between episodes, I did some stuff and things here. I cleaned up my base because it's getting a little bit messy. I made this room a little bit bigger. Made some hallways, a couple more rooms. We'll kind of cover them all here in a second. Last night I fell asleep. <laughs> I left my game on. And I, I should know because I have mob farm, right? I should, with and no filtering right now. But uh, I did make it so I got a whole bunch of these chests here. I want to open up, I think, just the epics. And I found this one legendary as well. And just kind of see what we get out of those kind of before we start. Because, uh, yeah, because uh, we might get some good loot here. I do have a wheat farm down here now and a little area for cows, which is pretty cool. But uh, that's definitely a thing. I also went ahead and made these trash cans. So when I do get stuff out of here that I don't need, <laughs> I can kind of just void it off. Uh, we've got a Spectre Coil, which is pretty amazing, actually. Wow, a mechanical user, too. We actually got really good loot there. I got everything from Diamond Armor, except for the helmet. But uh, the main thing, I guess, is that Spectre Coil. Where is it? Right here. This actually generates out of 28 RF, which is pretty fantastic, and that's kind of what I was hoping for. We've got a storage upgrade, and that's cool. We're going to drop that off, and that's awesome. <laughs> we'll cover everything, but then we're going to set up a little battery with that, because... That is a passive 128 RF tick for the rest of the pack. Uh, I'm going to go down here and look at the grasso. Just stare at it for a bit. Uh, not really, but <laughs> yesterday I was having trouble making grass grow. And my problem was this. So over here, we've got a watering can. Check that out. And I was just trying to grow grass. I, mean, I was just doing this thing. I was going, why is the grass spreading? <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, the weird thing about this thing, you shift and right click. Uh, it's weird that this is the particles. But like right now, the particles are there. It's not actually working. But you shift and right click and do it. You know, it, uh, it it works properly, like it's doing actual spreading now, but it has the particles either way. So it's really strange how it works to me. But uh, I finally figured it out. I got it working. That's pretty cool. And there I just had some wheat. I do have a wheat bar. I'm going to go look at that really quick. Maybe cover the tools I have and then probably get into some new stuff here. Uh, down here, I got a little wheat farm, like I said. And I also have this tool, which I got as a reward. It is a garden scythe. Takes uh, a couple blaze rods, a couple of nether quartz, and a stone hoe. It works a little weird in this pack, so you right-click, you see? And I only got, for all that, one of this. I got one wheat. But you would think, hey, it just ripped me off. But if you right-click again, for some reason, it gives me another one. <laughs> and this is what it does every time. So that time, it gave me one seed, one wheat. Then the third time I hit it, there we go. Maybe it's the third or fourth. I, I guess, I usually I just hit it, like, hold it down. Hits it three times. And I finally get all the stuff I'm supposed to get to. But it does do AoE harvesting really good. And I have been using that. I think it's behaving oddly. Because it's kind of set to work with the vanilla mechanics. Where crops are destroyed. And then it replants them right. And doesn't know what to do. <laughs> That's basically how it's working. Uh, over here I moved our bonsais. You notice this one too is moving way faster. Apparently the magma slimy dirt gives a bonus to the slime saplings. Like... 300%, <laughs> which is crazy. You can craft that too with just, I think, eight of these slime balls and a piece of dirt, which I'll probably do. I just haven't got to yet. But uh, yeah, pretty sweet. You notice here I got a couple new tools. I got this one here. It's an obsidian paxel. has 3,000 durability. Soupy, soupy? No, <laughs> super easy to make. Uh, mostly because we have unlimited obsidian. Like right now, if you look at our obsidian here, we have that. So we're good to go. But uh, yeah, it is a uh, axe. Shovel and uh, pickaxe, pretty good speed. Main one is uh, pretty cool though, is this one here, it's the web hammer. You get this one from sieving down, right here, bam, bam. Get these uh, web gems from sieving down gravel in a uh, iron or above, so iron or diamond mesh. And uh, you also get your uh, thumbcraft viz crystals, which are pretty cool. But uh, you'll get some of these gems at a 2% chance on the iron anyway. Smelt that down in furnace, you get the ingots, and then you can use it to make these hammers. These hammers mine a 3x3 three by, three by default, and I have a weird durability, uh, 3261, <laughs> for whatever reason. But yeah, they're just AoE miners, which is pretty cool, just uh, three blocks, 3x3, three three, which is uh, pretty spectacular all around, actually, so really cool. Also made this one last tool here, and this one is insane. This one's called a birthday pickaxe. Uh, you can go here, check that out. Take some obsidian, a couple of iron bars, you get these refreeing ports obsidian, you turn kind of craft it back into these reinforced iron, uh, obsidian ingots, and it's super fast. Insta mine. It's insta mining. It's just, it's crazy. So, um, insane. <laughs> Works really good. It does uh, pretty, pretty awesome all around. Boom. Just, I can't get over how fast it is. It's like literal insta mining. And it hasn't left any ghost blocks yet. Weird thing about it though, is you shift and right click with it, it also puts down cakes. So it uses some of the durability, like I could actually do it right now. 
Break down gives me a kick, man. <laughs> Which is pretty cool in itself. I'll just break it for now for all that matters. And uh, I think that's all I did on actual process, uh, kind of progress there. Other than that, I did tidy up our automation. So over here, I have a cobblestone generator going directly into a crucible, going to a stone barrel, going into the crate. So you kind of see there's a little item there that is called a flat transfer node. So you go here, go to flat trans, check that out. Just need an anvil on top of a transfer node. They turn flat and you actually get eight of them. You can't use speed upgrade on these ones, but you can use filters, but uh, we're not going to get into that right now. But it makes it so you can put uh, kind of a piping in between a block. So it's kind of like a hopper, maybe kind of comparable, but it could be put on any side, but it could also have ones for fluids. So I have one on this one. So I have one of the item transfer nodes going from here to here, pushing stone into the crucible. Then we have a fluid one pushing the fluid into the barrel with the water just kind of floating up here with our glass strips from uh, for Forge Multipart. And then the items is coming from another one right there. You can kind of just barely see the edge of it right there and just moving the obsidian automatically in. And pretty soon this will be totally full and backed up. It'd be pretty amazing all around. Also did the same thing over here. <laughs> so I just have it set up again just so we could do a magmatic generator fully kind of fueled. And uh, I think we're gonna get off these generators. I'm not a big fan. Although we just got power. Oh, we also got a gas tier. That is actually really good. We got good stuff, man. Mechanical users are pretty solid as well. I'm a little more organized right now too. So it's uh, pretty nice uh, that there. I think uh, for magmatics, I may go into the dynamos because we have the resonant conversion kits and that'll make them produce more power. So what I'm thinking. I also got one of these out of a, uh, I guess a, it was one of the, it was one of the chests. I think it was the third level one. No, the second level. I think it was the uncommons. Got a cow stall, and that's going to be something we're going to work on today with the cows. And uh, that is pretty much it. I think that's pretty much everything, except for we should probably accept our quest here. We have three of the cows now. I did get the uh, milk cow. It's a little weird. I thought it was going to be a vanilla cow, but it's not. You actually have to craft it. So you have to get a vanilla cow, which I got from my bait that we made yesterday. Uh, after I turned it into grass, it actually just spawned in. And uh, yeah, then you have to get a bucket of milk from that, then craft it. Then it kind of facilitates that. So yeah, I have four of the cows. I also did the blue slime, which was just the milk cow and the water cow. We still need to do the seared for the first tier. Then we're good to go. But anyway, let's kind of accept our quest here. Got some ender tanks, which is nice, a garden cloche and an inventory crafting table. And okay, the first thing we're probably gonna get to here is setting up an automated tinkers. Uh, we need it anyway, so we're gonna kind of get it done. I mostly need it for the uh, seared stone right this second, I guess, for the actual last cow, kind of get that done. But it'll also give us kind of ore doubling until we get the other setup done. So that's pretty cool. Why is that going laggy? This, this this is so weird. But anyway, we're going to make a whole bunch of grout. Run over here. Get it smelted up really quick. And we're probably going to automate this thing as well. Because uh, why not? <laughs> It'll only take a couple minutes and uh, be pretty much done. Really only going to automate the creation of agates. I'm not going to bother with blocks. I just uh, always prefer to do it that way. It's in the form. I usually use it, right? So probably easier way to do it. Do that, that, that. That'll give us a whole bunch of that. I also want to automate the lava here. So I grabbed some of these uh, flat transfer nodes again. So we're going to grab the flat transfer node, throw it on the top of this, and then grab a ender tank and pop it right there. And that's just going to fill up with lava and every one of these tanks here that are on the same channel, the white, white, white channel, you see the top there, you can kind of dye it different colors, will end up filled with lava, which is pretty cool. Uh, let's go ahead and clear that out. Just think of what else we're gonna to need to automate it before I forget that. Let's go ahead and grab probably two hoppers. I think I have some crates in here, although I probably only need chests to be honest. So let's do that. And probably a timer of some sort. So let's go ahead and grab some gold. I'm going to need some gold anyway. So let's grab like four of that. Get that smelted up. That's cool. And then I'll be able to double up the rest and uh, make our molds out of the rest of it. I think that's everything. Oh, I'll need some uh, cobblestone. Let's grab you. Okay, let's crap. Uh, crap? Let's not crap it. Let's craft up everything we need for the actual symmetry. So we need that. We need two drains. Uh, we're also going to need a tank, I suppose. So let's do that and that there. So there's our tank. Uh, we'll need a casting table and a casting basin. So that's cool. That should be the bulk of the stuff there. Let's go ahead, I suppose, and make some seared bricks. Let's make some more seared bricks. <laughs> Maybe a little more seared bricks. And uh, see where that takes us. So we're going to set it up right over here. Should not take very long. Let's go ahead and break that. Let's go ahead and grab all those seared bricks and uh, get everything kind of going here, man. Sweet, sweet, sweet. And uh, yeah, this is multi-block. You don't need to fill in the corners. Just kind of need to do this kind of block setup here. Kind of does the thing. Got my tanks, I got my drains and my controller. It should be good there. 
drains are going to sit on the second level. Then I'm going to throw the tank up on the top. It doesn't have to go like this, but it's the way I usually do it. Right there. Uh, and then we'll have to get this up to the same height, right? So we're probably going to need a few more bricks here, but uh, that is quite fine. Go ahead and grab you. <laughs> there we go. And what is it? what are we doing here? Is that enough? No, we need like two more after this. Sweet. And come across here. And once we have two more bricks, this is actually finished. So we're standing on one. I'll need two more. Let's do that. One, two. Cool. And I'll probably make it a little taller later on. I'm just not too worried about it right now. So anyway, that is a working smeltery. Uh, we just need faucets or some translocators or some piping. I'll just go with faucets right now. Let's do you. One, two. And I was also talking about a timer. So let's go ahead and get that done. My regular timer was in here. I'm gonna have to use this one. This one isn't uh, usually the one I use. And I'll need a lever. Grab that right there. And that'll handle that. So getting this thing working. First off, you can already tell the multi-block's working because uh, yeah, it's just kind of showing it right there. It is lit up, it's kind of on fire, right? So that's how that works. Uh, we need one of these enter tanks. I can see you're full of lava now. Pop it right there, grab ourselves a transfer node. Probably right there, and uh, we just need a piece of piping, which we could probably get one single piece. <laughs> Pop it right there. That'll start filling up with lava. That's gonna be the fuel. Uh, I'll probably get the, let's do the, uh, I don't know how much it's gonna take actually. Let's put like that many in there <laughs> and get our seared, uh, bucket of seared uh, fluid done first. Oh, did I grab two tables? I meant to grab, not two tables. Hopefully I still have enough seared bricks here. If not, we have some more that we got from loot bags. I wanted one to be a basin, so we'll just kind of do that right there. I'll need those tables later on anyway. So that is cool. Pop that there. Probably go down here real quick. Get this all automated. We'll just want a hopper under each of these. So one right here, one there, pointing outwards. So I'll just go there, there. Grab two regular chest. Those will kind of collect the finished products. In my bag, I think we have a bucket, right? So let's go stop pointing at the controller. There we go. Sweet, we're gonna pop that right there. And this is gonna be how we fill up the bucket with the actual seared liquid here. So the, uh, yeah, the seared liquid, seared, uh, whatever it is. <laughs> seared stone, maybe? Yeah, let's grab that. Just gonna cast it off. And uh, yeah, that'll just get filled up and uh, put it into the chest down there. Should probably get some of that gold in there as well. Probably make our first cast. So there you go, it's done, cool. Let's go ahead and grab a lever. Awesome, we're going to grab that. We're gonna turn that on right away. That's gonna work this timer, which is gonna make this automatically go. Um, but I need to be careful with it. I only want it on at certain times. Because right now, if I have a cast in there, I'll just kinda of start casting off whatever, and I may want blocks or whatever. I'm gonna do the blocks manually. I don't really need it any other way right now. I don't need to automatically make blocks for anything. And probably won't be doing it this way anyway. The seared stone, I might as well do that. I set that to 20 ticks too to make it a little faster. Oh yeah, I need to make my cast first. I'm a total derp. Let's do that. Let's go ahead and grab actual agate, cast that off. And that's gonna make the cast now, at which point I could probably turn this on and just let it cast off everything in there. So sweet, that's working. We got our seared uh, stone bucket and uh, we should be able to make our last cow. So let's go here, let's go to seared, grab our cow, probably look at the crafting table instead of the actual crate. And uh, there we go, we got a quest, which is awesome. Which one is this? What quest did I get here? I didn't even notice this quest down here. <laughs> so what do we get there? A resident exchanger, so we can use that for block swapping, which is fantastic. And uh, we got another one here, what did we get? Uh, demonically gargantuan drum, which actually kind of changes things. Let's go over here for a second. Sweet and sweet. I'm gonna use this for the lava instead, then pipe it into the tank otherwise. Uh, this thing holds a ridiculous amount of liquids. It's like a 2 billion millibuckets or something ridiculous. So I'll use that as the buffer. And then I'll just do a second buffer right here uh, with the tank, right? So I'll just do it like that. So it'll go from the enter tank into the drum. You can see there it's holding only 2.4 buckets, but literally it's like 2 billion millibuckets. So massive amounts of liquid storage, which is pretty awesome. And uh, everything's finished there, so that's cool. So the next thing I want to do really quick is probably, I'm kind of deciding here, do we get into power right away or do we get into the cows right away? We should probably get into power. Actually, before we do anything, where is that? Where is my, let's set up a battery for this thing so we get some extra RF here and probably some more power. Let's go to, I guess, a power cell. 
probably be a good little early battery. Or we can go to flux storage. Let's go into uh, let's go to at flux. Check that out. Right here. I have some of that. I was getting some of that flux from mining. I just can't remember where I put it. I have it right here. Probably gonna need some more, so let's grab that. Let's grab another flint and steel real quick. So flint, could I have you? You can do this in lava, but you can do it in fire as well. But uh, we're just going to light that on fire. Throw that inside. Throw that inside. <laughs> Get a whole bunch of that flux there, so that'll do that. And uh, we're going to set up the wireless kind of power system here. So let's go to add flux. I don't know how many of these we need. Let's do flux block. We're going to need the controller. So there's another bunch of flux blocks. There we need the point. We're also obviously going to need some blocks of redstone. So let's grab them. Can you actually just make them in this one? Oh, you can just smelt it down that way in this one. That's way cheaper. Okay, they, in the last pack I played, they actually had that disabled. So I could just go ahead and make six of those just like this. Because otherwise, to make those, you have to go this route. Bam, obsidian, flux, eyes of Ender. So that is actually a way cheaper way to do that. So yeah, you definitely want to do it that way. So what else do we need? We still do need some of these. We need some eyes of Ender. Did I get? Let's not do that. Very confusing in my life. Uh, I thought I had some eyes of Ender in here somewhere. No, I don't. Okay, just trying to be careful with our resources. We don't have a ton of uh, blaze yet. It's one thing we're a little short on. Right there. There we go. Sweet. And uh, maybe finally make some of these things. <laughs> Let's do like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight should be a good to start. Then we'll just make a whole bunch of these flux cores. Just gonna make a bunch of them. I'll end up going through tons of these things. But, uh, there's our flux uh, plug. Then we're going to want a flux point. So let's grab one of them. Sweet. And then we're also gonna want the controller, right? So the controller is where? Right here. Sweet as well. And how much more do we have? I'd like to do one of the flux storage. So that'd be what, six more blocks of redstone? A lot of people got these as rewards. I haven't been so lucky yet. So people are even saying you can get the gargantuan ones as rewards, which holds 128 million. This one might only hold like 128,000 or something like that. But anyway, we'll just do that there. And then we'll just need some glass panes. And then we kind of move on. Awesome. Cool and cool. So this is everything we need for like a power network. I'm just going to use this generator over here right now. But what I'm going to do is grab the plug. I'm going to throw that right there. The controller, I'm going to keep that somewhere kind of easy to access right now. I'm going to go to this back tab. I'm going to create a network. And uh, we'll just call this... Uh, I want to rename it. Oh, you have to do it here. I think you right click. Yeah. Let's just call it main for now. Do that. It's on. I also want to go over here, turn on wireless charging, and I want to turn on the left hand and right hand. Cool thing about that is uh, right now, if it had power, I'll wait until we have power. We should be able to charge our flux bore, which is pretty cool. I think all the other settings are fine. Then we'll need the point because that'll be where we feed power, right? But uh, go here. Go to main, awesome. Go ahead and grab that basic flux storage. Let's pop that up here right now. Make sure that's on the main right channel. You can see here it's already getting power. <laughs> it is just pulling all the power out of here, at which point it's gonna be drained, right? Yeah, it's just gonna keep producing power though and filling up that network. Now to move that power around, if I want to power a machine now, all I have to do is grab one of these points, throw it on the side, and uh, we got uh, wireless power. Uh, but I do need to do one more thing here, and I was going to do that with, what would be the best way to do that? I'm just thinking about one more thing. Yeah, let's go ahead and make a power cell. I need an actual battery as well, for because I don't think you can direct connect these spectra coils uh, to a plug. <laughs> Could you do that? Oh, you can. Are you serious? Yeah, that works. That is disgusting that that works. I did not expect that to work. <laughs> I thought I tried that in the past, it didn't work. So yeah, I could just uh, connect that Spectre coil directly to the plug and we're getting the 128 RF a tick out of it, plus the 40 out of the generator. So that actually works out perfectly. I'm actually quite fan ecstatic about that, to be honest. That makes things a lot easier. I have some more extra of these flux cores when I make more of the points, which is uh, pretty awesome. So yeah, we already got uh, Tinkers and we got wireless power. Probably work on a little bit power, better power in a bit, but I think next we're gonna go work on cows. Okay, I went ahead and smelted off a lot more stuff here. So I'm actually smelting down a bunch of iron. I'm doing silver right now, because I need some silver. And I also did some invar. Invar is two iron and one nickel for every three invar. And uh, we need a little bit of that. You just kind of smelt them both off. And if there was nickel in here, it would automatically mix with the iron. So that's basically how that works there. 
And I need to turn this off. I was using this kind of for a little bit here. <laughs> to make it so we can get blocks and make it go a little faster for now. But, uh, that should be good for right now. How much silver we get in there? I think that's close to what we need. We might need a little bit more. Uh, I'll do the in bar first. But anyway, what we're going to do here is uh, go ahead and work on power first. We're going to set up a magnetic, uh, magmatic dynamo. So we're going to do that because it's going to be easier for us to upgrade at this point. Uh, the other one is going to be a giant pain to upgrade. So yeah, we're going to just do it this way. Probably be the easiest way. We'll do a block as well. Just kind of speed that up. Let's switch it back to silver. I might as well grab that silver though and do what we can. So what we need to do is go to, I guess, at mag. No, what am I doing at mag? Let's go to magmatic. Kind of see exactly what we need. Also went ahead to beat some concrete power we're going to need. So that is the thing. We're going to need a... Invar gear, so that's why I just made that stone gear. You need it to be able to make the invar gear, so you're gonna need six invar. Then we need some of these transmission coils, so I think we're gonna need five of those. And then we do upgrades as well, so we we'll go ahead and grab these auxiliary transmission coils. And each one of those takes four. We only have enough for three right now. We need uh, four more silver, which we hopefully have. We do. We're good. I can turn that off for a second, switch it back to silver, and then it'll just kind of sort itself out right. And that'll be enough of the uh, nickel right there, so that should be good. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how much power this could produce, but I think it's several hundred, so we'll kind of see how it goes here. Can't remember, it's been a while. Oh, is that off? I need that back on. I don't have the timer. Oh, I didn't just reset the timer yet. I thought that uh, I had it at 20. It seems like 40 actually works better, so we'll do that. Here we go. And that's us giving us the rest of the silver that we need. Oh, we actually have silver on us. Why did I think we didn't have enough? What am I short on then? Nothing. I'm a total derp. Let's grab you. <laughs> we got our coil. Uh, I didn't grab my in-bar though. So let's actually get the in-bar. In-bar right there. And uh, we should have a little in-bar here. And uh, that should be good to go. Awesome. Uh, I also, like I said, went ahead and made uh, great concrete. We need that for the stalls for the cows. So to actually make the powder, you have to make uh, gray dye. The way I did gray dye is over here. This is the lens of color. So I can basically take that lens. Uh, I talked about making it in the last episode. Just take some glass and some black quartz, zap it once with a reconstructor, and it'll turn it into a lens of color, at which point you can put it on there. Then if you have dye in your inventory, so I have this dye, there you go, it'll turn into other dye. So you can just kind of go through the whole gambit of dye. You can even make lapis and um, like ink sacks and stuff. It's actually pretty crazy. I actually had to go make ink sacks to be able to get it all crafted, so that was definitely a thing. And uh, we're looking pretty good here. So I'll be able to make some of the stalls here in a couple minutes, but uh, we're working on the dynamo, so let's get back to that. Dynamo, grab that jazz, grab the actual gear, grab ourselves the magmatic. It looks like we're pretty good. Uh, we'll also grab one of these. This is the upgrade kit that we've been getting. I believe it's from the chest. I can't remember. I think it's the reward chest that I've been getting these ones from. I can't remember. It might've been from one of the, maybe the epics as well. I can't remember hundred percent, but I definitely have been getting them, but we're going to place this one because this one's going to be so hard to upgrade. I don't want to deal with it. These ones, uh, this one here is going to be super easy to upgrade and kind of just progress. With just one of them, we should be able to get a good amount of power. Uh, I need a crescent hammer, which you actually get in loot uh, bags as well. So we'll go grab that puppy. Go up here. We need this little red point to be pointing at the plug because that's where the power comes out. And the lava should automatically go into it, which it did. And this should be already producing power. So right now it's only producing 40 RF tick. It'll actually go down. The more full this buffer is, the... Um, less power produces kind of self throttles itself but now we can go ahead and head and use this kit on it so just like that you can see that the power automatically jumped up to 120 it's going down again because that's filling up i think it raises that buffer too but now we can take those coils and throw those in there now as well you can now hold 600 oh 600 rf tick that's not bad and it holds 600 thousand and uh that'll be pretty good i'm just curious if the lab is keeping up probably won't at max load I mean, I'll, uh, the main problem right now is probably just uh, liquid transfer. Those flat transfer nodes, I think it'll only move, I think it's 120 millibuckets uh, a second. It's not even a tick. It's like every, I don't know, you kind of watch it there, it goes up. It seems like it's about a second. And uh, it's definitely not keeping up. As the throttles down, it'll go down. Of course, we'll end up with a big giant buffer here, and I'll be able to just pipe it into the side of this and uh, just kind of do it redundantly. Although I'll probably completely change the setup at some point. But uh, that'll kind of greatly increase our power. And uh, when we're not under load, it'll kind of back up with lava anyway. So we should be pretty good. I think we're done here as well. We don't need that right now. Let's go ahead and make some stalls now. So we've kind of upgraded our power, which is pretty sweet. 
Let's go uh, grab, we need some hay bales, I believe. So let's do you and you. Awesome, maybe, there we go. Cause you need those for the stalls. Stalls are right here. They need some iron bars as well. So let's go ahead and make that. Don't know how many of these we're gonna make right now, but I'm gonna have one probably for every cow <laughs> by the end of the pack. It's kind of the plan here. But now let's head down here where we're gonna actually do our breeding and our automation of them. I'm gonna kind of use this pick here right now because I'm a little afraid of just destroying all my walls. This thing is so fast, it's ridiculous. But anyway, we're gonna take like the stalls, throw them into the side right here. And I am gonna automate one of them, I think right now. I wanna do the seared stone one because I wanna test if my idea of how to automate them is gonna work. So we're gonna test it out real quick because I did make this extra casting table by mistake. And gold, I'd need one more Igat cast, wouldn't I? Let's grab, we'll need uh, Igat to make another one. Let's grab that, there we go. Maybe, there we go. And I just turned that on because we have one in our inventory. That replaces it, cool. So we need to test this out. So what we're gonna do is get the cow in there, I suppose. Let's go ahead, I think my cows are on my bag. <laughs> Let's see here, what do I got? I got water, I got liquid lava, and blue slime. Where's the rest of them? Oh, there's obsidian, there's milk, and there's that guy. I need him in a halter, which I can in a second. Let's take the obsidian guy, pop him over here. If this works too, you shift and right click to put them in it. And actually, just to show you, when you go to them, you can kind of shift and right click on them, and they have an internal buffer. You can see there's already a thousand millibuckets of molten obsidian in this one. What I plan on doing is grabbing like tanks, right? So we're gonna have a tank, fluid translocators, and just have it automatically kind of fill up the tank, then probably have a different way of storing it from there, or just a big buffer of liquid, which is kind of the idea. But these ones that can actually use igots, on the other hand, so this one here is gonna be that cow, this one right here, right? So this halter is empty. I need to get him into a halter, so we'll do that. And then pop him into here. He needs three minutes before he can actually produce, unfortunately. Oh no, that's not the right one. Which one is that? That is the milk. I want seared stone, man. Seared stone, there we go. And he's gonna be three minutes and 15 seconds, unfortunately. Oh, I got milk in this one now. I totally derped. I'm gonna have to move him. <laughs> Let's do that. Let's uh, go over here. Sweet. Pop it right here. I just wanna see if this is gonna work. I think it's going to. So we take a cast, pop that right there. They're gonna have a hopper underneath and just kind of pump the stuff into a chest, I'm thinking or automatically into an ender chest or something and pull it into the system at some point. And that should work. I think here is for buckets. So if you just want a bucket to look at you could do it like that. We could test that, right? So yeah, do I have any buckets still in my bag? I do want to test these things. Like I, I, I quickly looked at them, but I didn't do a lot with them. But anyway, let's go ahead and grab a, we have a hopper, we need a chest, and then we'll need some translocators. So let's go ahead and try that out. There's some buckets, a uh, hopper, uh, chest, I already have chest made, so let's go ahead and grab one of them. Sweet, and translocators. So translocators are pretty cool. Uh, they get a little laggy if you put too many in one spot. They're definitely known for causing lag in mass, so be a little mindful on that. But anyway, let's do that. Let's go ahead and grab a couple sets of them. They're not too bad, sweet. Now let's go see if these connect here. I'm not sure if these even connect here because translocators sometimes can't connect. Yes, they can, sweet, to something. So let's do that. I should be able to just do that there. You just kind of hit the center there. And that means everything will be pulled out of this here and put it there. And that's kind of my plan. Uh, I may do it from the back though. Just so in time I could like see the cows. I want to show them off, right? They're my fancy. These are my show cows, <laughs> which is pretty cool. I want to try a bucket on this one too to see if that works. Yeah, so you can bucket liquids uh, straight out of them. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with this molten obsidian bucket, but uh, definitely it's been scienced. So that is pretty cool as well. And I guess the last thing we need to do is wait a minute, 30 seconds to see if this can work. But now we can set up the automation part of it. Oh, this thing is too quick. Too quick for its own good. I'm gonna have to, it's gonna take a while for me to get used to this uh, birthday pickaxe because it is just that fast, right? Let's do that, sweet. You have to like, just tap it. <laughs> just give it a little love tap. Right there, then we should be able to just pull all of these into a chest. Sweet, and in time, this should just fear up, fill up with seared bricks. Now, seared bricks aren't something we need a lot of, but uh, I mean, in the future, we'll have different metals. I mean, it's not even gonna be that far into the cows where we can get, say, iron. And this is one of the ones I'm targeting, actually. So I need to get the liquefacted coal and the molten clay. What do I need for this one? Lava, seared stone, of course you do. 
So once this produces a seared stone, I'm going to take that seared stone cow and probably start breeding them. So we just need another 30 seconds here. We are going to need some wheat. Uh, what else could we do here? Nothing really. We're really just waiting time. I guess I can get these guys down. I'm probably going to make some kind of tank too. Uh, now that we have tons of iron, we can double it all up. I mean, this guy I may just use for breeding. I'll put him down for now. Um, I may just go ahead and just make another uh, a bunch of iron tanks, I suppose. I'm going to have to look at all the tanks we have. I don't know what we have for cheap, decent tanks. Like water, I don't even care about him. Lava, it wouldn't hurt to have him as an extra buffer. Uh, let's see here, what else we got? We got Molten Obsidian. I could just automatically probably cast that off into a basin. I didn't think of that uh, until right this second. <laughs> but anyway, there we go. It just put it out. And there we go, we're getting ingots. So that definitely does work. That's awesome. I wasn't sure if it's going to actually move the liquid out of the... Um, the actual stall so that's cool uh but now i thought of that let's go ahead and do this i want to try that molten obsidian real quick let's do here i don't know if you can cast off molten obsidian directly in a basin i don't know if it's the right liquid because i know there's a kind of obsidian you can get out of tinkers but i'm not 100 percent sure let's do that he's got 40 seconds but uh, we can test this stuff out it's just different kinds of automation right so let's just do that and uh, i guess we'll wait and see we're going to grab this guy, though, like I said, and we're going to do some breeding. So I needed... Can I grab him? Ah, is there a cow in there? Oh, that's the problem. Well, this guy can actually just get a home for now. That's cool. Anything in that one? Nothing? Sweet. We have this guy. We're going to need to breed him. So let's go drop him off. I need to look at what the other one was for the liquefacted coal. I think this could be used as a power source, actually, a liquefacted. Uh, so lava. So the lava guy is right here. Let's grab him. Sweet and awesome. I really like how the stalls look, but it's kind of funny how it shrinks the cows, right? It makes them way smaller than they should be, but uh, pretty neat nonetheless. It's a neat little kind of add-on mod. All right, it's not even an add-on mod, just a uh, mod. Boom, boom, and uh, see if we can get lucky here. No, I think we got another seared stone. Yeah, we did too. It takes 20 minutes for them to grow up. Can we speed that up with this? No, you can't use wheat. Sometimes you can use wheat to speed up their growing age, but it looks like you can't. That's unfortunate. So we have to wait a little bit of time, but that's fine. So I was waiting on this though. No, that didn't work. So how, what am I gonna do with this? Like, oh, that's not good. I'm gonna have to use a tank or something. I didn't realize I had two buckets in there. That's unfortunate. Can I fill this up like this? No. Oh, well, we'll find out. I'm going to see if that's the right liquid, though. We can kind of see probably right here. Go to recipe. Yeah, that is the uh, smelting liquid. So we should be able to cast that off into the basin. So the, that is pretty cool as well, because we'll be able to automate obsidian in a new way, but uh, just for fun, right? Because uh, realistically, our uh, obsidian kind of automation is already pretty OP. So next usage, 25 seconds. I might take this one and just uh, keep him in here, right? Eh, where'd he go? Oh, it's doing the switch thing. Uh, with the these call halters just because uh, it's being derpy <laughs> They automatically switch so it changed so it goes hey replace that and It's just moving everything around to make everything really confusing I guess I should only have one of these on me at a time Now that we can kind of utilize them, but I'm gonna keep trying to breed these guys because I believe you go to let's go to uh, What is it? Liquid did coal Check that out. If you can actually go to the cow you can see the breeding chance I believe different cows have different breeding chance so if I want to add, yeah, this one's only 20%, 20. So yeah, we'll kind of go through this. I'll kind of breed them as I go. It's not going to be 100%. Sometimes you're going to get cows you don't need. Like this guy in the end, he, he's lived a good life, but I don't know if he's going to be around the whole game. So that is definitely a thing. And uh, that is pretty awesome. I mean, we've got the cows going. That is pretty cool. And uh, we also got our tinkers going. Uh, we upgraded our power. So yeah, I think I may actually wrap this one up here. So as always, if you guys like this episode, please hit that like button. If you really liked it, hit that subscribe button. It is always appreciated. I want you guys all have a good one. I'll see you guys next video. Later.